Hey, I'm Dr. Roos, and I wanted to just do a quick video, kind of like one of my concept videos on the types of bonds that I focus on in my courses. Yeah, and the three main types that right uh, covalent, ionic, and hydrogen bonds. Now, uh, a bond is, you know, say uh, it can be an attraction between two entities, like in the hydrogen bond or the ionic bond. And then with the covalent bond, it's a little bit different because there are actually two atoms or two molecules, you say, are now joined together by a sharing of electrons. So the, the electrons are involved in the these two. In the hydrogen bond, it's more about, I call it partial charges, a partial minus charge and a partial positive charge, right? The, the molecules involved in hydrogen bonds tend to be what we call polar. With the, with the covalent bond, two atoms or molecules, say, share electrons. And in ionic bonds, they're between two ions. You have a transfer of electrons. Right, so now transfer versus share, two important things to keep in mind. So let's get into the covalent bonds quickly. And let's say there's a, the simplest example would be two H's represent two atoms of hydrogen. And hydrogen always exists as two, a pair of hydrogens. We call that a hydrogen molecule. It makes up hydrogen gas. So an atom of hydrogen has one electron. We, we show a dot, let's say, to represent that. Let's say this hydrogen atom has, another, has an electron. And that's all those atoms of hydrogen have, right? They have one proton in an atom of hydrogen. And then there's one electron to kind of counteract the plus charge of the proton, let's say, right? It makes it neutral. So it's not hydrogen atoms by themselves aren't stable. They want to share this electron with something else. It could be in a water molecule, it gets shared. But if we look at the simplest one, right, these two hydrogens share these two electrons and then form that, let's say, let's call it H2, which means two atoms of hydrogen now are two joined together by a covalent bond. They're gonna share these two electrons equally which is another important concept for covalent bonds. And then that would be a nonpolar covalent bond and form this molecule, right? And then that just means now that these two electrons can fly around. So there's an electron here, electron here. They, they can fly around and be a part of that molecule. They actually determine the shape of that molecule based on where there's a probable likelihood of the electrons, right? They kind of make space. Now, if we look at, say, a water molecule, then this hydrogen shares an electron, this oxygen atom shares an electron to make this bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen. And then the same thing occurs between this hydrogen, the electron that it has, now it's going to be shared with this oxygen to form this bond, right? Oxygen shares an electron, one of its electrons, at, to form that bond. So we have a sharing of electrons in this molecule. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, water molecule, the covalent bond is considered polar covalent bond because these electrons, the two here and the two here, are more like they're drawn toward oxygen because oxygen has what's called electronegativity much more than the two hydrogens. It just means it wants those electrons more than hydrogen does. It. And there's a, you know, a table of electronegativity that compares all the elements and how much they want electrons or, okay. So then that is covalent, a sharing. It can be an equal sharing of electrons like with the hydrogen molecule or an, an unequal sharing in the case of water, and that turns water into a polar 
molecule because electrons, we, we, we call it a partial negative charge on this side of the molecule, whereas you get, like say, partial pluses on the hydrogens. So polar, like you have a north and south pole, another way of thinking of it. That helps set up the hydrogen bonds that I'm going to talk about after I do the ionic. Now in ionic bonds, you transfer electrons. So sodium chloride is the most, you know, probably the one that's used most of the time. So what do, sodium does is it releases an electron and gives it to chloride or chlorine. The atom of chlorine gets an electron to make it a negative ion. Because sodium gives up an electron, it now has more protons and electrons, but it, it has a plus charge. So in ionic bonds, you get a bond or an attraction between a plus and minus, right? Minus and minus repel, or a plus and plus repel in this context. So, right, there's an ionic bond now between this ion and this ion the simplest way of looking at it. Um, remember that there's electrons being transferred, not shared. The other thing to remember is because when you put these ions in water, you refer to them as being soluble, right? They want to be in water, another way of saying it. Uh, it another, remember that ions are, another name for them is salts. You know, salts are ions. They can form ionic bonds. You break the ionic bond when you put salt into water. Right, then the bond's broken and the two ions are now separated. Then the last one is a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonds occur, there's always, the hydrogen is always involved in a hydrogen bond. That means one of the molecules has to have a hydrogen. That hydrogen will have a partial positive charge, like in the water molecule, okay? So if we have a water molecule here, right, this partial, why right, you have a partial plus here and a partial plus on that end, right, and then the oxygen gives you a partial negative charge. Now if I put another water molecule next to it, then the the partial positive of this hydrogen, let's just call that partial plus, and this partial negative on this oxygen, right, they interact. So you say that now there's a hydrogen bond between this water molecule and that water molecule. Now, you, you, you can have hydrogen bonds between water molecules, and I'm gonna talk about it in protein folding. It's used, it's used a lot of other places, but for my classes. And then the third example of when hydrogen bonds are involved is when you say two strands of DNA, this strand of DNA say, and this strand DNA, they come together and form hydrogen bonds between strands. So those are examples of when hydrogen bonds are involved, right? A hydrogen is always involved in a hydrogen bond. It doesn't have to be, you know, this oxygen can, in a water, for, if it's water, it can interact with another molecule containing a hydrogen as well, okay? The, the important thing is one molecule has a partial plus, the other mo molecule has a partial negative. It's different than being a, an ion that has a plus charge and a chloride that has a plus charge. There's no deltas here. Delta means partial. So you, you have a fraction of a plus charge, right, when you form hydrogen bonds or when you're talking about the water molecule, per se. Okay. 